Hey guys, Simon here, and it's time to show off yet another feature uh, for Harmonia version 1.4, but I have completely forgotten what it is. Perhaps it has something to do with this really annoying blinking tutorial button over here. That's right, so there is a tutorial in the works for Harmonia 1.4, and this has taken quite a while to get up and running, and um, I'll just launch into it and kind of explain why on the, along the way. So there have been a few different iterations of a tutorial for Harmonia over the years, and I think this may be number four, or number five or so. Excuse me as I burp off camera. Um, and ultimately I decided to go with a method where you have a bunch of different units which have a bunch of different levels and set it up more like as kind of a puzzle game where they're not exactly difficult puzzles. They do get a little trickier later on where you really have to follow orders in order to uh, be successful. But ultimately, it's just um, a bite-sized way of learning everything that you need to learn about the game. And it's separated in units so that you can just skip ahead if there's something you already know everything about and um, don't really want to bother with. So, in Unit 1, we have our first orb. Everything in this uh, tutorial is all about collecting an orb to finish the tutorial. And as you can see, when you start a level, it gives you this nice little explanation of what exactly what it is you need to do and your objectives underneath. Um, so like explanation, what we're learning, and then just some real straightforward objectives. Um, and we can close that whole thing by clicking on this button here, which works the same way as this over here. So this first level uh, is just moving around and one thing that I learned really early on when making these tutorials is that the, the first thing that a couple people did were try to move around using um, the arrow keys which in Harmonia actually affects the camera rather than you being able to move. So what ended up happening was uh, the camera got completely screwed up, like way zoomed in and like at this totally bizarre angle and you couldn't actually go around to do anything. So um, a lot of camera controls had to be implemented, um, which meant like a complete redesign of, um, or at least like a 50% redesign of how the camera worked. So let's just grab this orb. Hurrah, we did it. Level complete. So, so this first unit is basically now about basic moving around, which you just did, and camera controls. And um, let's just go back to this first level real quick so we can explain this. All you can do is just pan around. That's the only camera control that you're given. You can, you can move around, you can click on places of the map, you can click the orb, that's it. Um, this has been interesting for me because I've never had to really make a tutorial this in-depth before. So, really explaining everything in such a excruciating detail is a kind of a, an interesting challenge. You have to make it not boring, but at the same time, educational, which is like kind of an oxymoron. Um, edutainment, is it, that's the word that I'm going to drop here. Um, this level is designed to teach you how to rotate the camera left and right. The only thing you can do is move around and rotate the camera left and right. Panning has been disabled. I'm spamming the keys. Nothing's happening. And behind this wall da, 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 is an orb. So let's just grab that. So that's how this tutorial works in a nutshell. Let's just uh, go through all the basic navigation just to give you an idea of how this works. And then I'll do a few of the combat levels. This one teaches you to rotate the camera up and these are all pretty short, just so that you can get them over with once you learn how they work. Uh, there are a few that are long for um, very um, specific reasons, like the one just like to teach you about what takes time, when to be patient, I'll just give give you enough time to think. And this last one is uh, zooming in and out. Don't really need to show that. Uh, so let's cut to some of the combat ones, and these ones by this time hopefully you've learned to use the camera, so now you can zoom it around freely. Might as well use this time to explain how some of the things in Harmonia works, if I haven't already. Um, 
when you start combat, you only need to <clears throat> click one time, as explained right here. Uh, one thing that kept happening when people uh, tried Harmonia for the first time is when they saw something, they would just click it a million times like it was Diablo, and obviously that does nothing. Um, it really is just click it once and then let the game do the rest. And um, the reason this battle is taking so long is to point out that you have this stamina meter here in the corner. And I want to have this gigantic blue button that uh, is like glowing and pointing out things and says, Your stamina meter, burp, 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 burp. So, that's, uh, that's yet another thing I want to do. But um, I've been kind of bored of uh, working on the tutorial for a while, so I'll get back to that some other time. Um, one of the incarnations of the tutorial that I tried to do was a more quest-based, a more quest-based thing, which seems to be the way to go as far as design principles are, mm. like actually throw you into the game, keep, keep you engaged that way, and, um, teach you the game as you move along. Um, but one thing I personally have never liked in games, and I'm, I'm probably alone here, is when you do all these, like, really stupid remedial tasks that are ultimately unimportant and I personally just don't care about because I want to play the game. Like, you know, you enter a town and you just have to learn how to manipulate items. So your first quest is to go collect grandma's teapot. Grandma says, oh, I need some tea and thirsty teapot. Give me my teapot. And I honestly couldn't care any less about grandma's teapot because here I am. I'm a dude. I've got this giant sword and I want to use that sword. But nope, I've got to go collect a teapot. That's kind of a bad example, just because of course you can make a more interesting quest, but still, I am much happier with this, where it's just, if you really need to learn the game, like, I'm not going to hold your hand and make you go through boring stuff, um, and kind of pretend that this is the real game. Like, if you need to learn the game, then sure, I'm just going to give it to you in, like, the most straightforward way possible. Like, just go do tasks that it tells you to do, and when you're done, it'll say, great, you've learned that, let's move on to the next thing. And hopefully by the end, you know everything you need to know. So when it's uh, time to play the game, you can just actually go through and play the game. Um, so about camera controls, they, um, not only do they need to be restricted, there are a few different um, a few different things that need to be gun need to be gun that needed to be done to um, to kind of to make ways for some of the other features coming forward and that was to have these multiple levels of camera controls and by by that I mean like the game needs to have some basic defaults like right here I hit the default button and it's it has the default camera angle. A default uh, position like mm. distance zoom level and when you, f you hit X it goes back to that but I may want to have mm. certain maps that completely change the camera around like the way this tutorial mm. works is it obviously restricts you mm. from um, unit to unit which took a lot of um, which took a lot of new features mm. to get to get working mm. and um, what it does is it restricts um, it, it tells you what your characters, uh, sorry, it tells you what the camera does on the character level. So like you've got this base level that tells you what your camera does, like here's at some default, but then when you switch from character to character to character, because you can't do that in this game, you'll have like 50 different, or okay, you'll have four characters, not 50, you'll have four different characters you can play from. Each of them can conceivably be in a different uh, camera position, like if they're in a different room or they're in a cutscene or something like that. So they need to manage their own camera. So if you cut to the bear runner, he's going to have his uh, camera controls. If you cut to the guy in the middle of a cutscene, he's going to have his camera controls. And it can vary on different places on the map like it does in the tutorial level. It can vary from map to map like it does in the first levels, like where everything is just restricted. If you're talking to somebody, the cutscene will restrict it, so that's already, I think, four different levels. You've got your base, your map, your character, and then your cutscene. And um, you need to be able to switch between those. So that was like a complete overhaul of the, the way the camera works. Um, to like to have all these fancy schmancy camera settings. So let's see. This is the first level in which you get to control two characters at once. I figured it might, it's a good idea to like really teach you the in, ins and outs of combat before 
having you dive into using a few characters at the same time. And I'm kind of cheating. It says in this, um, in this level to go around and just have character one go do his thing, have character two go do his thing, red and blue. And then when you're done, you'll both be in the same spot. They're kind of sep they're separated, so you can't actually um, interact with one another. But then when you get to level two, you are suddenly thrown into this big, huge battle with a lot of really wimpy enemies that um, really the only way to be successful is to have them fight at the same time. So step by step, making it a little harder. At this point, the, the tutorials actually get kind of tricky in the sense that um, you can fail. Like, if I don't do this one correctly, then they are going to die. For some reason, Blue didn't actually join my team. That's a bug I'll have to address. Um, which may actually... It's probably going to actually end up with my death. Slowly but surely. Maybe if I do this right, or if I get lucky, I'll be able to actually take this one out. The whole point of this one... Well, I guess the secondary purpose of this map is to actually have you give you a chance to practice fighting in a basic sense. There was one uh, one that I had earlier where you were fighting against a bear and um, his two little cloud friends that it took you attack, attack, attacked you from afar. And if you um, didn't take out the clouds first, they, they're the DPS uh, dealers. So they would really, um, you would really end up being screwed because this, the, the bear in the front just takes forever to kill and they would just unload a bunch of DPS on you. Uh, just for the sake of testing, I want to see if I'll get blue this time. That's a little irritating. Or if I'll get blue and red. Nope, just red. So I'll have to go through and fix that. But, uh, this seems like a good spot as any to stop the, uh, tutorial. There are a few new features in Harmonia 1.4 that I want to show off when they're a bit further along. Um, but, uh, for the moment, that seems pretty good. So, once again, I'm Simon, this is Harmonia 1.4, this is the tutorial, and, uh, I should think of something witty to say. <laughs>